the Phoenix McBronis. Brandis! Yeah! เป็นไงนอกจากคัดฝีมาแล้วคัดหน้าตามาให้ชาวสีสเกตชาวสาวสีสเกตด้วยนี่ต้องบอกเลยว่าฝีมือเป็นไงผมไม่รู้นะแต่ทรงอ่ะเกรดเอเลยคุณแบงค์อย่าให้ถอดแกะเชื่อมแล้วแกะเชื่อมแล้วถอดอย่าพึ่งถอดปล่อยให้เป็นหน้าที่เราสาวชาวสาวสีสเกตก็เถอะอ๋อไม่ไหวไม่เห็นแล้วขอเชื่อมชาวสีสเกตหน่อยเลยเออนี่ไงเอาใจได้แบบคู่แรกมาโชว์แต่แค่นี้อย่าเพิ่งหมดเสียงกรี๊ดกันไปเพราะสำหรับผู้ที่ขึ้นมาท้าโชว์ด้วยนั้นเนี่ยเขาคือลูกหลานของชาวสีสเกตเลยจากอำเภอปรางกูนะครับและถ้าวันนี้เนี่ยเขาสามารถเอาชนะคู่ต่อสู้ได้เขาจะได้รับเงินรางวัลนะครับ 15,000 บาทจากคุณพลพิจารณ์นะครับเลขาสมาคมชาวสีสเกตอีกด้วยถ้าเอาชนะได้นะอ่าถ้าชนะได้นะเพราะนั้นขอเสียงกรี๊ดดังๆเลยนะครับต้อนรับนักรบแห่งปรางกูเพชรทักษิณโอเยสีสเกตไปไปเพชรทักษิณโอยะสีสเกตนักรบแห่งปรางกุลFighter being introduced right now, Max Branis, 23 years of age, nicknamed the Phoenix, 174 centimeters tall. This fight taking place at 68 kilograms, with a professional record of 51 fights, 30 victories, nine losses, and two draws. Returning to Thai fight for the second time. Introducing his opponent fighting out of the black corner. He goes by the name of Pet Taksin Oyat Sisaket, or formerly known as Pet Taksin Pa Samran Chai. 23 years of age, 177 centimeters tall, 
from right here in Sisakit province. He's had a total of 98 fights, 65 victories, 30 losses, and three draws. It's got to be nice for Pitaxin to be here, uh, right back here in Sisakit. Of course, he's serving right now in the Thai military as a sergeant. Yeah, and I, uh, I did say that Max Brandis was making his second appearance here at Thai Fight. First time was earlier this year where he took on Senchai, and I've got to say he did a fantastic job. He did lose by decision, but it was relatively close. My it goodness, looked, the it, amount of people that came up to I me know. and said that Max Brandis <laughs> should have won that fight. It was very close, but Senchai did take it. I, I have to say so as well. Senchai definitely did take that fight, but here we are, our first fight of the evening. Petaxin versus Max Brandis. Yeah, good teep there by Petaxin. Thailand versus Israel getting started early on. Oh, another good push kick there, but this time by Branis. Absolutely beautiful from the Israeli fighter. His timing is impeccable early on. Good hands there, off balance, but he did catch back Branis with a few good right hands and jumps in with that elbow. Does pet tax in. Branis training out of powerhouse gym in Phuket. As you can see there, pet tax in was loading for an elbow, but not quite getting the timing right. Another right hand there from Pet Taxin, who's making his debut here at Thai Fight. Yeah, we've never seen Pet Taxin here at Thai Fight before. Correct. He's doing a very good job early on. Sometimes what they like to do is bring back a hometown hero. And Pet Taxin has got the nod here. The fans will be on his side, of course. But does that add some pressure? Oh, absolutely. But coming back into your hometown, as you said, it's a lot of pressure. I mean, what's going through his head right now? But <laughs> from what I've seen in the ring so far, he's doing a good job. Oh, sneaky right hand there from Branis. Yeah, Brandon is a very technical fighter. He can be sneaky, but takes that kick over there once again. You know, when you fight in Sunshine, it's more about technique versus technique, but you can see right here, it's all about aggression. Is and he able to cope and keep up with Pet Taxin? Left kick to the body. Absolutely, and both fighters bring the aggression to the table, as you can see early on right here. And that's what the referees here on Thai Fight love. They love that aggression. They love fighters moving forward constantly and attacking. Another right kick to the body once again, and there's a few red markings on the left side of the body of Branis from all those right kicks. Yeah, but that's one of the reasons that... What's the best way to say? And again, it, instead of blocking, he's, he, he's trying to catch them instead. Now he's doing a good job blocking, but maybe he's taking too many kicks to the ribs early on. Yeah, quite right there. Oh, there's that teeth again. Flush. Fair to say, that was a little revenge there for Pentax. Then he took a, a few teeth to the face early on in the round. The mid midsection kicked it, and there's that right kick again. And like you said, he tries to catch it, and then he connects with the right high kick. Does Brannis? Warning shot there for Pet Taxin. Brannis is more than capable. Pet Taxin knows that he has to be very careful because fair to say that Max Brannis has a lot of tricks up his sleeves. He's just that sort of fighter that I don't think Pet Taxin has watched him fight before. I think it's fair to say that. Of course, Max Brannis fought a lot in the Thai circuit. Or the Channel 8 circuit, and that's the end of the first round. Entertaining first round, stay with Of course, ladies and gentlemen, here we are in Sisaket province. Me and Aaron already have uh, felt some of the beautiful hospitality that Sisaket has to offer, the beautiful Isan hospitality. But in the ring, I think it's a very different story from uh, the local hole boy, Pit Taksin, as you can see there, pushing Max Brannis in the face and connecting with a lot of uh, kicks to the ribs. Doing a very good job in the first round. Here we go, the start of the second round. And once again, the push kick to the face from the Thai fighter. Three out of three there. Hat trick of push kicks from Pet Taksin. Brannis, one of his only cleanly shots has to have been that right head kick. I'm sure he's going to search for that one more time. He's just too many of those right kicks to the ribs right now. He's taking way too many shots. Surely his uh, bordermen have told him to defend himself in that regard. And again, a kick. And again. Even though Brannis is catching it, it's hitting those ribs. The left side of Brannis' body is starting to look like a fire hydrant. And once again, another kick to the ribs. He needs to start blocking those, otherwise he's going to have a bad time throughout the rest of the fight. Brandis still trying to move forward and now Pentaxi being the one waiting for the right timing and he does it once again. Brandis I mean he is catching that kick but then there's no counter at all. No, I mean he's catching the kick and he's trying to throw some hands and that hasn't worked for him throughout the fight. And I think 
we can credit that to Petoxid's reach and how far his lips go, really. And now going for the left kick. Petoxid going for a right hand once again. Push kick there from Brax. And there's that kick one more time. I've really lost count of how many times Petoxid has connected with that right kick. He's throwing it at will and it's connecting. Why would you not? Why would you change the game plan? If it's working, it's working. As for Max Brandis though, he has to do a lot now. He can't keep taking all these shots from Petoxid. We are inside here in Type 5. There's a covered roof. It's quite hot. I don't know if that's going to play a part. Whether the uh, fighters are going to get exhausted. Molly, a good right hand there from Pet Taxi. Oh, yeah, I mean, especially with, with the conditions here, it's extremely hot, as you said. It's definitely going to play a part. That's without a shadow of a doubt. Good low kick there from Max. Oh, good right hand from Pet Taxi once again. Max Banis, his head just knocked right back. But he looks okay. But speaking of which, though, he's taking a lot of solid shots from Pentaxin. Doesn't seem to have faced him a lot. Going up for the clinch now, the fighter in the black corner going Pentaxin. End of round two. Here we go, coming into the final round of our, third, our first bout of the evening. Of course, Pentaxin. The black corner and Max Brannis in the white corner. Let's take a look at some of the action there from the previous round. And that right kick still connecting, still finding his way home. Oh, that was a beautiful right hand. The chin though from Max Brannis. He's taken a lot of shots from this fight so far. He's remained on his feet. It's a sign of a fighter who's definitely been training very well. But you have to say, Pet Taxin is up right now and I think Unofficially, if Brannis wants to take this fight, he's going to have to find something special and knock out Pet Taxin. Definitely not going to be easy. He's thrown some of the hardest shots he can. But of course, the tie still remains on his feet and still attacking. Oh, beautiful left knee there from Pet Taxin. Don't think we've seen too many knees so far in this fight. <laughs> maybe the first, in fact. Max Brannis trying to take it into the clinch. But maybe that is favorite Pet Taxin instead. Of course, Pet Taxin is a multiple time amateur Muay Thai. Champion. Good, good block there from Brannis as uh, Pet Taxin through that right leg. Another right kick there from the fighter in the black corner, Pet Taxin, as Brannis continuously tries to move forward and he has to do exactly just that. He might have caught Pet Taxin with an elbow that time as well as he moved in. Whatever he catches, Pet Taxin wins. He has to throw everything, including the kitchen sink, at him. Oh, Beautiful. good push kick. Yeah, to the face once again. Brannis, look at the elbow, catches him with a right. Beautiful right elbow there from Pet uh, Sorry, from uh, Max Brannis. A very good job from Max Brannis applying the pressure, but he has to continuously do that. He wants to get something out of this fight. Going for another elbow, but gets clinched up once again by Pet Taxin. Brannis having a decent round right here. Oh, absolutely. His corner definitely told him that he has to do something special. And he's trying to do exactly that. Another left elbow there and connects from Brannis. Good knees. Doing a very good job on the inside, but we just see Brannis try to knee Petox into the head. I think he tries. <laughs> and why in the not? Clinch at close range. Absolutely amazing what we're seeing from Rex Brannis right now. And he's definitely taking this round from the looks of it. Good knees there from Brannis. He did eat a right hand, but. Didn't seem to phase him at all. Constant pressure, constant forward movement. Great round for Max Brandis so far. Good push kick. Pet Taxi and happy to be on the back foot. Brandis is going to have to throw something here. He's moving forward. Looking for those knees and elbows. And he's got Pet Taxi on the ropes multiple times. From the last fight that we've seen Max Brandis, we're used to seeing him fighting slow pace and taking his time. But this is working out for him so far. Maybe he should have started the fight in this style. Pet Taxin looks exhausted. Look up there from Brannis. Push kick. End of the third and final round. We will go to the judges' scorecards. Great fight to start. Tie fight, Sisaket.
ายมันนะขอเสียงหน่อยแล้วมันแน่นอนอยู่แล้วโอ้โหเป็นไงลูกโก็บอกทั้งสองฝั่งเก่งจริงๆครับแล้วยิ่งเป็นมวยลูกผลอยู่ในมือผมนะฮะกรรมการเตรียมจะยกมือแล้วนะครับเดี๋ยวดูว่าจะเป็นฝ่ายไหนนะครับรอกรรมการจากผมนะฮะและผู้ชนะในคู่แรกของไทยไฟสีสเกตวันนี้เจ๊แก่เดอะวินเนอร์สเพชรสินโอยาสีสเกต Well, that's a worrisome third round for Pet Taxi. Oh, right, yes, it's a kid. Your winner, first round, first, first bout here at Thai Fight. It's a kid. Stay with us for more action. Don't go anywhere. น่ากลัวขนาดไหนขอเสียงต้อนรับไวกิ้งจอมโหดมูอามัดคาเร่โมฮัมหมัดคาลิวไวกิ้งจอมโหดประเทศนอร์เวย์เมาไกลจากนอร์เวย์เลยนะครับโหดูเขาพร้อมมากนะเพราะว่าผมสังเกตเห็นนะตอนผมเตรียมตัวอยู่ด้านหลังเวทีเนี่ยเขานอนนวดอยู่ข้างๆผมโอ้โหดูสลีละแล้วผมว่าคนนี้แข็งแรงมากใช่พี่ก็เลยไปนวดของเขาต่อเขาจะได้ฟันศอกใส่ผมนะครับเอาละครับผมว่าตอนนี้เนี่ยเรามาเจอกับผู้ที่ขึ้นมาดวนด้วยดีกว่านะครับซึ่งเขาพูดนั้นก็คือสายเลือดใหม่ไทยไฟจากอำเภอจอมบึงราชบุรีเลยคือปกติเราก็จะมีทั้งนักมวยที่เรารู้จักกันเองดีใช่ครับแล้วก็หน้าใหม่ๆที่เราบอกว่าฝีไม้ลายมือไม่ธรรมดาใช่ไหมพี่แบ๊กซึ่งเราอยากจะเห็นเหมือนกันเหมือนเมื่อกี้ลูกหลานสิสเกตเฮ้ยอยู่ดีก็มาเอะถีบยอดหน้าแบบโอ้ยออกถือว่าน่าสนใจมากนะครับใช่ครับแล้ววันนี้นะครับเขาจะมาพิสูจน์ให้ดูว่าเขาจะได้ไปต่อบนสงเวียนไทยไฟหรือไม่นะครับขอเสียงต้อนรับนะครับเทพศูนย์แห่งจอมบึงฟอลิกิตลูกมหาชนฟอลิกิตลูกมหาท่าเทพอสูงแห่งจอมบึงประเทศไทย
Mohamed Khalil coming goes all the way from Oslo in Norway. 28 years of age, 170 centimeters tall. This fight taking place at 69 kilograms. He holds a professional record of 64 fights with 40 victories, 20 losses, and four draws. He is a two-time Norwegian Muay Thai champion. And now introducing his opponent fighting out of the black corner. He goes by the name of Fali Kit Lukmahat Hat. His former name, people might know him as Papayap Kwai Tong Jim. His real name, of course, is Somchai Tungong. 28 years of age, 174 centimeters tall from Ratchaburi province. He has a total of 202 fights, 161 victories, 36 losses and 5 draws. Of course, for those who may have seen Fa Pei Yap Kwaitong Jim, he um, was very famous at Mo Chip Sta Stadium a few years ago and he's fought, fought some left way as well. And it shows by his uh, training partner, he's been training with um, Tan Min Lat, who we'll see later on tonight, take on Teng Nung Sejai Sai Rung. So he's very familiar with the left way fans, with the fans of Myanmar that is. And also the fact that he won't be wearing gloves. <laughs> and uh, I think that suits him just fine. Of course, Muhammad Khalil, we've seen here, him here in uh, Thai fight before. This is his fourth fight. Last three haven't been successful, so maybe he's looking for his first victory here tonight in Cease again. Here we go. Round one. A very slow pace start, you could say, from the two fighters, but I don't think it will last for long. Going with a huge right hand already, or a huge left hand already, Farley Kit. Yeah. Khalil also headhunting with that right hand. Here comes Farley Kit. Oh my goodness. Jumping left kick, but. Just a slip there, though, just for a slip, Khalil. Yes. Farley Kit still continues to move forward. Seems like it's a style that he absolutely loves. Another good left hand there, and a left hook from Farley Kit, and another left hook. Enjoying himself in there. Yeah, it seems like whenever Khalil wants to move forward, he wants himself oh, into trouble. And no. there's the first knockdown of the fight, and I think that's it. That could be it if Muhammad Khalil can't, can't get up and be a it's knockdown a, victory. It's a, he he crumpled him with that left hand. My goodness, you blink oh, once it, and you miss it, and that's exactly what happened there. Dangerous times here. That left hand is like a piston. More left hands coming in there from Farlikin. Muhammad Khalil is still fighting back. Such heart, such determination from the oh, Turkish warrior. Oh, left that time. Knees to the body. Khalil still on wobbly legs, taking, taking deep breaths in. You've got to admire the heart of Muhammad Khalil, but is he doing the right thing by constantly moving forward? Takes the boy shots to the shin there. Falik hit with extraordinary composure in that exchange there. Another left hand to the body that time from Falik hit. Could oh, fa nice left hand there. Acknowledged by Falik hit as well. Could Falik hit be tired right now? You can see him taking some very heavy breaths. Good kick to the body again from Khalil. Nice knee there from Balikin, who's on the back foot right now. Just taking his time, isn't he? Waiting for another opening. But Khalil's done great. There's that left hand again. Khalil going in with an elbow recklessly. Takes the knee to the body as well from Balikin. Balikin was more in the back foot now, but maybe he's just taking his time, just taking his breath, he started off very aggressively. Good hands there from Farlicky, but Kevin, I think you're right. I think Carly, look at, look at the, the, the way that he's throwing those hands. It's completely different to what we saw earlier. Oh, but now it goes. And that's, this, it. that's, that's it. it, that's it. The it's referee calls it. I'll have to see a highlight of that. I didn't exactly see what connected with him. Was it another left hand? Oh God, Absolutely, so but it's fair to say that Khalil definitely saw a problem early on. Oh, right on the nose. Could have rebroken it. Wow, what an amazing first round that was. Absolutely. First and only round. <laughs> exactly, but beautiful heart there shown by Mohamed Khalil. But today's Balikit day, and Balikit Luke Mahatad did a wonderful job. Took his time, was very composed. Shows his shot perfectly, and that nose could be broken. Yeah, let's have a look at the, uh, the KO shot. See, it's, I thought it deflected off the arm of Khalil. Was it the knee that did? No. Not quite sure what happened there. Maybe the problem with the shoulder. 
Let's have a look once again. I saw him holding onto the shoulder. Oh, well, that was earlier. Do you think it was a delayed reaction from that initial, from the initial shot I there? think there may be some problems with the shoulders. You can see him when, oh. when he went down, he started pointing to it. Could be a broken nose with that shot as well. Yeah, it looks like he's rebroken. But this is the shot that finished him off. I wonder if it was just behind the ear and just destroyed his equilibrium. Yeah, it could be. Yeah. Then the knee to the buddy for good measure. But yeah, they keep showing the replay of that uppercut. Oh, and I'm guessing that is where he's rebroken the nose. Yeah, it looks that way. Yeah, I mean, it's a mess right now. Viewers at home can't see right now, but it doesn't look good. Let's get confirmation for the MCs. เทพสุนแห่งจอมมือฟ้าลิขิตลูกมหาชัยเจ้าเป็นไงสายเลือดใหม่ไทยไฟท์ไม่ธรรมดาจริงคนนี้มันหนักมากนะเมื่อกี้
There you can see, standing in the ring, the imposing figure of Alex Bublia, otherwise known as the Ulfinden. Is that a character from The Witcher? Is that correct? I think so, I'm not yeah. sure. <laughs> <laughs> 33 years of age from Romania, but also resided in England for a long time. 181 centimeters tall. This fight taking place at 70 kilograms with a professional record of 98 fights, 67 victories, 30 losses and one draws. 2012 ISK Southern Champion, 2016 Raw Combat League World Champion, 2018 WMC I1 International Champion, trains out of PK Sanchai Muay Thai Gym. And now introducing his opponent fighting out of the black corner, he goes by the name of Nong or Shohapaya. His real name is Adison Jit Kamkun. 21 years of age, 174 centimeters tall from Payao province in the northern part of Thailand. Has a total of 232 fights, 182 victories, 40 losses, and 10 draws. Of course, Nong Oh, he is a northern Thailand champion. And if you've just joined us, this is Thai Fight Sisaket. Part of the purpose of this event is to raise funds for the Sisaket People's Association, which will go to causes and ultimately benefit the people of Sisaket. I should also mention that all the fighters today, Thai and foreign, have been checked for COVID-19 by the Department of Medical Sciences. I should also mention that Chang Beverage, one of our main sponsors, will give 100,000 baht to anyone if you can knock out your opponent by a spinning back kick. To the head. <laughs> to the head, indeed. <laughs> we always miss that part out. Could never forget that. And so far, we haven't seen anyone do that here at Thai 5, but who knows, it might happen here tonight. I'm excited for this one. Absolutely, it's it. The no, WMO no. has uh, non go ranked at number four in the world. Bublia around 20, I believe. Yeah, Nong Oh, he's fought in Thai fight four times and has won by stoppages four times. But I think it's fair to say that Alex Bubli is probably his most strongest opponent. Bublia is an interesting one. He can take punishment. And he never seems to get knocked out in all the times that we've seen him fight. Oh, and absolutely. even at a Thai fight. And we've seen him maybe knocked down in knocked the first down, round, yes, and then but, but comes not, not back and wins the in, fight. Exactly. Been around the Muay Thai sea for a long time now. Oh yes, whether it's in Romania, in England, or in Thailand, or the rest of the world really, and some hard heavy shots that are coming in from Nong Oh Shohapaya. I believe he used to train out of the Nosley Academy, so shout out to Liam Nolan and uh, Jonathan Haggerty, who train out of there. And, right and he, now, fought, he actually fought on Thai Fight London in about well, 2016, maybe 17. <laughs> Some years ago now. Yeah. And of course, he's training at a PK Sanchai Muay Thai gym right now. So a shout out to Mr. Tuk Tuk Rung or Sia Game, as we all call him. Nice up got there from Nongo. Then walks into a left hand. But we told you, Bublia can take shots. Yeah, he can definitely take shots. And he's almost like a... A drunk at his speed, he starts off slow, but <laughs> when he gets started, you can't stop him. Well, speaking of this weight division, 70 kilograms, one of the men at the top of that is Tawan Chai. And if Bublia has been training with him or practicing with him, then that will put him in good stead. You know, I've seen a lot of legends go to the PK Sanchai Muay Thai gym lately, especially Samad Priyakarod and uh, Somrat Kam Singh, in fact. Maybe that's a confidence booster for Alexandra Bublia. No, go, not go again. Head chasing, looking for that right hand. You know, oh, he seems to do everything right as an athlete. A lot of fighters in, in, in the back, you, you would see them eating a full meal, eating some rice. Oh, good luck up there from Nongo. Eating some uh, minced, minced beef or minced pork. But uh, you see Nongo, he's, he's eating a, he's always eating a protein bar or uh, <laughs> drinking a protein shake. Or eating iron by the looks of it. <laughs> good luck kicks there from the Thai fighter. And dishing out iron as well. Some heavy shots there once again from Nongo Shohapayak, cornering Bublé. End of round one. Good display of Muay Thai from both fighters there. Stay with us here. At Here we go, taking a look at some of the replays there from the first round. Nongo, of course, with some huge and heavy shots. Bublé also still fighting back, but we'll see on the back foot. Yeah, it's interesting to see Bublé just be able to decide to step onto the back foot and try and counter Nongo. Yeah, once the round was over, you could see that uh, Bublé just uh, gave a thumbs up there to his corner saying everything's okay, don't worry, I got the situation under control. I think he fought Sayot the last time we saw him on Thai fight. It was a, as you would expect, it was an absolute war. Quite a close fight as well, yeah. fair to say. Yeah, there's more technical. 
and that's down to Bill Blair. Good body shot. To the second oh. round and Nongo going for the Haymakers early on. My goodness, Nongo just wants the knockout. Well, it's four victories, four KOs so far in the young career of Nongo. He's looking to add a fifth and again looking for that right hand. Absolutely how, absolutely love how Nongo just tries to hunt for the head. A beautiful elbow, the counter elbow from Bublé. But like we said, Bublé is no slouch. Absolutely not. Definitely one of the more tougher opponents that Nongo has faced in a long time. Going for some huge and heavy shots, but Nongo fires back. Actually, in the third or fourth time we saw Nongo, he actually did get dropped with a flying knee out of nowhere. I mean, he picked himself right back up, but... Yeah, that's why the referee did not count. I mean, if you don't show any signs of he is susceptible. He is susceptible the way that he throws those hooks. He keeps his guard very wide, very open. So of course, what we know from Nongo as well, is that he can take shots, he can take really heavy yeah, shots. Absolutely. Especially from what we've seen in this fight against Gong Dai in the Thai fight Lafang that was. Oh, oh, still trying to push forward, but a beautiful right hand there from Bubli. That Very good. through the clinch. Yeah, Nongo showing a little bit of frustration right now. Yeah, he's almost frustrated that Bubli doesn't seem to be hurt from any of his shots so far even though he's throwing the hardest shots he could possibly throw. He's also keeping a quite a good guard as well. Almost struggling in the clinch there, Nongo. I think he did stay after the last time he fought Patrick, but it's his favorite style of Muay Thai. Just goes to show the mentality. Oh, another elbow coming in there from Nongo. Yeah, it's absolutely fair to say that Nongo actually loved the Patrick style. And, the, and here in Thai fight, it suits him just fine. Oh, still getting pushed again. back. Usually by the second round, we see Bublé getting started away with some heavy shots. We haven't seen it just yet. Good knee there from Nongo, but again, Bublé is able to move out of the way of the big hammer shot. Beautiful right kick there from Nongo, and he blocks the low kick as well. Very good coordination from him. Oh, good left hand there from, from Bublé, and then a solid right to the body from Nongo. Oh, what a fight we have here. Absolutely phenomenal. How could both fighters be fighting at this pace? It's incredible. Good Big. shot there from Bublé, just when you thought that he was caught on the ropes. End of round two. What an incredible second round that was, just filled with action. Let's take a look at some of the action that we saw for the, for the second round. Some huge haymakers thrown from early on, but of course some beautiful counters coming in from Alexander Bublé as well. Really thrown those low kicks, but the blocked by Nong Oh. But those hooks coming in from Nong Oh, any of them could have caused a knockout, but of course, as we know, Alex Bublé got an incredible chin, and so does Nong Oh. I've noticed that a few times when Nong Oh comes in with those wild haymakers. Bublé is trying to counter with those elbow strikes as he moves in. Just at elbow range. He's connected with a lot of them as well. All right, here we go. Third and final round of what's been a really intriguing and great matchup. Oh, fantastic. It's one of those matches that, even though we're only oh, in the third round, has rematch written beautiful. all over it. Some heavy shots again from both fighters, in fact. Oh, full player swinging as well. Some amazing exchanges, and no more trying to go for the knockout as he has done for the last two rounds. Both fighters with tremendous chins. Oh my goodness, what a start to the round. And Nongo really wants to go home early. I don't know why. Maybe there's a cab waiting for him outside. Who knows? Again, you can see Bublé looking for that elbow. Nongo, of course, trading out of the famous Cho Hapi action, where one of the trainers there is uh, Wang, Wang Chang Noi. A lot of people may know Wang Chang Noi as the 32nd knockout man. Beautiful combinations there for Bublé. A 1 2 folds it up with a leg kick. Exceptional work here from the Romanian. Can't imagine what uh, Nongo's corner has been telling you. Maybe just go in there and raise it all up. Try to knock your opponent out. Throw as many punches as you can. You see, for the first time, we see that Nongo is a little bit hesitant. A big elbow there from Nongo, though. Probably maybe has to start applying the pressure. There's that left hook. But another low kick. 
Good body shot there from Bublia. Here comes Dongo once again. Every single time we see Bublia here in the tie fight ring, he's always impressed. And now he's impressed, he's impressing us by the amount of heavy shots he's able to take and his countering has just been superb. But against someone like Dongo, you gotta do a lot more. My goodness, I don't think... Is he going to get back? He deserves to, to win the fight it's, on his feet. He really deserves it. It's been a long time it. since I've seen Bublé knocked down in the third round. Some incredible shots there thrown in by Nongo, who still has Unbelievable. knockout power. Unbelievable. gets up and throws a combination and hits it with a leg kick. Which, by the way, the fight was going... I didn't think Bublé would go down at all. What an what amazing heart he's got, though. Absolutely incredible. But of course, when you try to trade shots against someone like Nongo, you might have a really bad time. Nongo going to the clinch and getting the back of Bublé. Definitely going to work in uh, his favor for the judges if uh, what he's done so far is, isn't. And a big right hand there from Nongo, Shou Hapayak. End of the third and final round, an amazing fight. We will go amazing. to the judges. And the first time. Nongo has gone all three rounds on Thai fight. I'm clapping, the audience is clapping. Oh, absolutely. All the facets of Muay Thai on display, including Incredible Heart. No one deserves to lose, but there can only be one winner. Let's see what the judges have to say. Devastating shot there. Left hook that dropped Bublé right on the button. The defining moment of the fight, to be honest. Oh, there it is again. Straight on the nose. But Bublé, with that heart of his, wasn't going to stay down very long. Let's get confirmation. มาดูครับผลอยู่ในมือผมแล้วนะฮะดูว่าน้องโอจะเป็นปัจชนะหรือว่ามนุษย์หมาป่าจะกลายร่างนั่นแหละสิครับผมมาครับแล้วผู้
ครับปลายฟ้าสอนนิตยาแม่ชื่อหนูจะหวานเหมือนปลายฟ้าแต่ก็ร่วงด้วยปลายเท้าได้นี่ร่วงแน่ๆเพราะว่าการซ้อมหลังเวทีแล้วบอกว่านักมวยหญิงเนี่ยความดุเด่นหรือว่าความโหดความรู้จักแม่ไม้มวยไทยไม่แตกต่างจากฝั่งผู้ชายเลยนะโอ้โหของจริงผมดูแต่ละครั้งรู้สึกว่ามันสะใจมาถ้าใครไม่เคยดูนะฮะบอกเลยว่าวันนี้ไทยไปจัดให้คุณถึงสีสเกตแล้วแล้วก็ชาวช่องแปดดูไปด้วยกันได้เลยสนุกแน่นอนครับใครไม่เคยดูเหมือนผมวันนี้สนุกแน่นอนนะครับและสำหรับผู้ที่จะขึ้นมาชิงชัยด้วยนั้นนะครับเธอมีด้วยความดุความห้าวพร้อมมาอัดคู่ต่อสู้แบบไม่ยั้งเลยทีเดียวนะครับไปเจอกันเลยดีกว่ากับสาวแข่งลุ่มสารวินเวโรวรุจิรวจิราบุกสาวแกร่งลุ่มสารวิทกระแทกเมียนมาTime for the ladies in the white corner. Plaifa saw Nitea, 27 years of age, from Buriram Province, here in Thailand, not too far away. 165 centimeters tall, with a professional record of 80 fights, 50 victories, 28 losses, and two draws. This fight taking place at 53 kilograms, and is the only female fight of the evening. Now introducing my father's opponent in the black corner, representing the Kayan people in Myanmar, Vero Vorujirawong, 25 years of age, 64 centimeters tall, has a total of 33 fights, 14 victories, two losses, and 17 draws. Of course, this match here is in fact a rematch. These two have fought before in Myanmar under left-way rules. Vero taking the victory by KO in the second round, in fact. Maybe Play Fire will want a little bit of redemption from this fight. Yeah, Vero recognized as one of the best 
fighters at 53 kilograms. And she's been running right here since joining Thai Fight. Oh, that's without a shadow of a doubt. I think she's had maybe four fights here as well and four victories. Only one of them going um, to the very end. <gasps> that was against Angela Chang. Yeah, trains out of Tiger Muay Thai in Phuket. Shout out to uh, our mutual friend, Johnny Betts. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and I uh, mean, from the previous fight, Johnny Betts may have wanted to teach uh, Vero some of that clinching that he's very well known for. Might see some of it here tonight. Fourth bout of the evening here at Thai Fight Sisaket. The fourth card check of card check fight of the evening. There is nine fights. Eight of them are card check. The gloves, of course, reserved for Sang Chai. Yep, the gloves always reserved for Sang Chai. I mean, it's there sitting on a ped pedestal in the back. <laughs> <laughs> and Barra started the things off very early. Such action. Looking for those elbows. Fly Fire was looking for a left high kick. Vero having none of it. But that's exactly what we see from a Vero fight each time. She always wanted to start the fight off early, oh, and that's exactly what she's doing right left, here. Left hook out of nowhere. Stuns Fly Fire. He's now backed into the corner. This is not where you want to be. She's holding on for dear life. Vero seems like she's very adamant to break her record from the previous fight against Fly Fire. And Fly let alone in, in her own home country. Yeah, Fly Fire looks in a little bit of trouble here. A beautiful piece there from Fly Fire early on. Well, Vero's just going to jump in and attack. Oh, could be another left elbow. Fly Fire looking for those knees. To me, what Fly Fire needs to do is clinch up Vero, leave her no space to attack. It worked very well for Angela Chang in the previous fight. So, why not Fly Fire do the exact same thing? See Vero there going in with those hooks after a good left high kick attempt from Fly Fire. Again, Vero's going to just walk it down. Watch out for that left high kick again. Oh, left hand. Body shot of her own there from Vero. That left hand stunned Flyfar. Flyfar could be in trouble here. Flyfar doing a very good job still on her feet, but in the corner where it's very dangerous against someone like Vero. Flyfar's corner telling her to throw an elbow. She does exactly just that. Almost connected with the first one, but missing with the second. And you can see right away, Vero doesn't want to be in the clinch at all. She's trying to, let's put it this way, avoid it at all costs. Trying to go for a side kick there, Fly Fat. Yeah, she walks into another right hand that time. Trying to go for a kick there, but just missing. Fly Fat, she needs to really time her kicks much better than that. And again, trying to tie up Vero, end of round one. Well, an interesting round there. Vero, obviously the aggressor of the two. And Blyfire was momentarily locked right there, but she got herself together and she was able to tie Vero up on a number of occasions and deliver some good knees. Vero, I do believe, won the round, but not having it all her own way. And yeah, there are some times where Blyfire had her moments, especially within the clinch. True, a couple of good left high kicks as well that Almost caught Vera as she was rushing in. Flypa definitely really wants this victory, especially after the last time they fought. And especially in her own sport in Muay Thai. Not sure if you saw that out of the camera, but uh, the corner man for, <laughs> for Vero having a hard time getting out of the ring and staying in the ring as well. My goodness. Round two, here we go. Oh, beautiful body shot, perfectly timed, and down goes Blyfar. Don't think she's going to get up, her corner no, man's trying to tell her to get up. Oh, what a celebration there from Vero. Wow, what a body shot that was. Oh, the first, first shot thrown of the second round, and Blyfar is still rolling around in agony. An extremely hard shot there for Vero. Nothing we, we don't expect from her though. We always expect her to come up with these heavy shots and there she is celebrating with the Cayenne flag. Of course, the flag of her people. Life are still receiving treatment. Let's take a look at the shot that did it. We might need to rewind the tape just a little bit there if you're listening in the truck. I don't care who you are oh, and how you're built, no matter what, that's gonna hurt you. Sternum shot, bread basket, and that's all she wrote. 
This is a better angle. Oh! That'll sap all the air out of your body. My goodness. I tell you, anybody, anybody in the world would go down for that shot. Apart from Bublea. <laughs> Impressive once again. Congratulations to Tiger Muay Thai and of course to the Queen of Thai Fight, Vero for Rujira Wong. ใช่ครับบอกแล้วนะฮะมวยไทยนะฮะใครก็ได้นะฮะหญิงก็สามารถต่อยได้นะครับแบบนี้เท่จะตายและยิ่งเป็นมวยค่าเชื่อแบบน
I am very excited about this fight. There you can see in the white corner, Elisi Corcasey, 26 years of age with a professional record of 39 fights, 28 victories, 11 losses and zero draws. He is 26 years of age, originally born out of Haiti in Port-au-Prince, and then moved to Germany and now of course resides in Thailand. And now introducing his opponent fighting on the black corner, Sayok Pumpanmuang. His real name is Sakna Niemhom. He's 38 years of age, 173 centimeters tall from Pisanalok province. He has a total of 329 fights, 278 victories, 49 losses and 2 draws. And of course Sayok, what a list of honors he has. Rajadana champion, Thailand champion, Lupini champion, WMC champion, Thai fight champion 2014. Of course, Isuzu Super Isuzu Cup Super Fight champion. <laughs> Never distinguish between them two sometimes. Yeah. Isuzu Cup tournament fight, Isuzu Cup Super Fight. <laughs> I'm not sure. Anyways, this is going to be an amazing matchup. It's going to be an absolute war for those who haven't seen Elezi Kokesi before. Absolutely amazing the way he fights. He really is. He's done really well on the Muay Thai scene. Channel 8, Super Champ. Um, Vertex fight promotion as well. I think yeah, he won by Lumpini knockout Stadium. there. Lumpini. He's a big guy, big dude. Can't remember the last time I've seen him lose. I can't remember seeing him lose at all. Yeah. Trains out of uh, Powerhouse in Phuket. We're expecting big things for this fight. When we first noticed the fight sheet, the fight card, this was the one that stood out to us. Oh, absolutely. And it stood out to many Muay Thai fans all around the world. Just waiting for this one. Sayok, he did move up to like 74, 75 kilograms, but now he's back down to 72 and he's starting to chop people down like we saw, what, 10 years ago? It's been very impressive. Just missing with the hook there. Beautiful evasion there from Elizzi. Beautiful right kick there from Elizzi once again, and Elizzi putting his combinations together quite well. Looking for that body shot. Good footwork, yeah, good footwork though from Elise, who's uh, using that left hook and then moving out of the way. Trying to tie up Sayok, go for some clinch work. Maybe not the best thing to do because, as we know, Sayok, he loves being in the short range and he loves to throw that elbow. Elise is quick, putting those combinations together. And, and look, look at that footwork, he's not stopped moving. Circling the ring. And as soon as Sayok gets close, left kick to the body, sorry, right kick to the body, to the left side of Sayok. And then Lizzie moves to the left oh. as well. Good right hand, then a left by Sayok. Of course, he's moving to the left, knowing that that's Sayok's power side, let's put it that way. Whether it's left hand or left kick, Sayok could knock out anybody with that. And Lizzie, though, doing a good job with his footwork, as you can see, moving to the left each moment. Sayok throws any sort of combination. Like we said, Elise is, is turning heads here in Thailand, but this by far is his biggest test. There's no, there's no doubt about it whatsoever. And of course, the Thai fighting team have seen Elise fight elsewhere and know that he is the right opponent for Sayok here tonight. In a couple of Thai fights ago, we saw Sayok take on Jordan Watson. We thought that was going to be a, a fairly even fight, but Sayok took it to Jordan on that night. It wasn't to be, but this is what Elise is doing right now. Making it a close fight, making it a close first round for Sayok. You gotta say he's doing very well in there right now. Oh! More of a slip there. Did off balance though, Elise. Yeah, he, get, he gets up fast, and that's why the referee did not count. See, so again, Sayok happy to chase, and Elise happy to be on the back foot, frustrating Sayok. Yeah, but doing a lot better now, Sayok, after getting almost what could have been a knockdown. <laughs> Right hand there for Elise at the end of the round. Good solid round. Stay with us here at Thai Fight Sis again. What a great first round that was between these two behemoths. Of course, Sayo Pupubung in the black corner and Elise Kokhezi in the white corner. Let's take a look at some of the shots that were thrown in the first round. Both fighters with some very Heavy shots. It was. It went back and forth, didn't it? But it really did. But towards the end of that first round, you got to give it to Sayok. Sayok just had that more determination. It seemed to have figured out Elise towards the end, and that could have been a knockout or a knockdown in another day. 
But of course, Alizzi going up very fast. Yeah, Caucasi quite elusive, to be fair, in that opening round. But if he wants to try and take it to Saiki, if, if he wants to try and win this fight here at Thai Fight, you have to go head to head at some point in the fight. And Sayoko already starting strong with a huge jab to start things off. Now just chasing down Alizzi, beautiful leg kick there from the Thai Fighter, and some huge combinations, hand combinations there from Sayok. And Alizzi trying to fight back now. Oh, gets caught with a one-two combination. Caucasus tough, he's got a chin on him, man. Oh, absolutely. Sayok says, you're still a young man, you don't want to trade blows with me. And that's exactly why. But Caucasus, 26 years of age, Sayok, 38 now. Huge experience from Sayok. Looking for that textbook left elbow. One of the patented attacks that Sayok loves to employ. Nice left kick there from Sayok. Ripping. Outside thigh shot. There's a little nick under the right eye of Kokesi. After those punch exchanges we saw. I mean, we, we, we love to talk about his footwork. He's doing a very good job of moving to Sayok's right side. But at the same time, he's really got to get this match started. He's really got to start oh! moving forward. And a knockdown! Sayok gets knocked down. He needs to go to a neutral Beautiful corner now. Beautiful right elbow there by Kokesi and Sayok. It's down! My goodness, Blinkett, you've missed it. Expect the unexpected here on Thai Fight. Kokesi now moving in for the kill. Is Sayoko he going to... Looks like he's in a lot of trouble right now. Yeah, there's... I'm not sure if it's blood on the dyed hair pouring down his face. It's got to be a little bit of blood there. Or... Oh, Casey moving in for the kill. Sayok, he's still wobbly legs. Well, Casey can finish this. Star in the making, boys and girls. He could be witnessing history right now. Oh, absolutely amazing. No one expected that, except maybe Elise himself, who's extremely confident right now, making Sayok miss. Stunning elbow from Carcasi has silenced the crowd. Getting to the body from Carcasi. Still got to be wary of Sayok though. As he comes back with a flurry of punches, he eats another elbow. Sayok moving forward. Carcasi catches him with an uppercut. Then there's a right hook there from Sayok. Oh, and the fans have come back to life again. Sayok not keeping up. Sayo continuously moving forward. Caucasi may be in a lot of trouble oh, right now. And what a beautiful body shot. Right hook, left body kick. Right hand from Sayo, left elbow. Sneaky left elbow there. Caucasi doing such a great job staying on his feet. Another digging right hook to the body there from Sayo. He is chasing this fight. Absolutely amazing. Did not expect this to happen at all. You see this blood coming from the mouth of Sayok, but that elbow must have caught him. Right there, Sayok, another body shot. Kokesi wraps up Sayok. Kokesi wants the, the end of the round to come now, I think it's fair to say. Another swing and left hand from Sayok. Body shots galore. Kokesi holds on. End of round two. What a round, Stunning my round. goodness. That's why we love Boy Thai. What an extraordinary round we just witnessed there. Of course, Sayong early on coming in with a huge and heavy shots. Of course, afterwards, Elise, it was an elbow out of nowhere, was it? Right there, and that's oh. the one that knocked Sayong down. Coming out of absolutely nowhere, it looked like Elise was in danger there. But beautifully timed. But not in Elise world. One of the things I've noticed about Carcasi is that he never drops his head. It's always held high. Always looking at what his opponents are doing. Never covering up, really. Oh, and that's exactly what you have to do when you're fighting someone like Sayok. Can you see that? Even when Sayok's throwing, he still puts his head high. Can see the shots coming. And I'm not sure if you hear the crowd here. In seats again, but they're really rallying behind Sayok, hoping to get something out of this fight. You gotta say, he's done a really good job, though, after being knocked down. Well, let's look at it this way. 10-9 to Sayok, first round, yep. officially. 10-8 to Carcasi, second round, unofficially. If Sayok wins this round, we could be going to a fourth round. Oh, exactly. That, <laughs> that could happen. Carcasi coming in very hard, though. Sayok trying to, try to figure out his Haitian German opponent. Beautiful left kick there from Sayok. Pumpa Blum. 
KZ once again on the back foot, trying to throw some shots, but receives oh, the shot, but a beautiful there. elbow there. Stunning from Carcasey, timing it to perfection. Oh, another left shot to the chin though of Carcasey. And once again, another good left kick there from Sayok. Carcasey though taking another right kick and some more shots. Great combinations there from Sayok, pushing the Haitian German fighter back. You can see that Sayok was trying to go to the body, but I think he was a little bit off balance that time. More big shots there from Sayo, but Kokesi takes it really well. Beautiful shots there from Kokesi once again, but he's on the back foot. You can see again, even when Sayo moves forward, Kokesi, if he can find one shot, shot, just one shot, he'll take that opportunity. But a shot to the body, to the legs. Oh, another left hook there from Sayo, and a body shot with that leg. Wow, how, how do you call this fight? How in the world do you call this fight? It's been absolutely amazing so far. Just full of action, even in the middle of the third round here. Beautiful left kick there from Sayok. Once again, a Kokesi maybe he's lining up an elbow, elbow, and he does. Good elbow again there from Kokesi. I think he's winning the round, to be honest, right now, Kevin. He's had some beautiful counters. And again, counter shot. Deep to the body. His corner telling him, just keep teeping, keeps Ike away. Easier said than done. Oh my goodness. I don't think we've seen anyone trouble Sayok this much uh, for a long time. Since Janajon probably knocked him out. <laughs> <laughs> there again, Kokesi with that left hand, just moving away, spinning away from Sayok's left elbow. Well, maybe Kevin Solomani, but, no, but he didn't knock Sayok out, did he? And Lazy Kokesi does exactly just that. And now he's moving forward. Maybe Sayok getting a little bit tired here. He is, he's looking tired. He's doing everything he can <laughs> on Elezi, and Elezi counters back once again. Another left hook there. Oh, good left hand from Sayok. Solid body shot. And a good elbow there from Sayok. He's a, elbow in the inside. He looks absolutely exhausted right here, out on his feet. Oh, again, Kokesi with that elbow and the footwork to move away from Sayok. He's definitely done his homework on Sayok. Very good job for the powerhouse Phuket team. Oh, left hand from Sayok! There's some blood coming from the mouth of Kokesi after that vicious left hand. You know what, this could go to a fourth round. Remember, there are no draws here in Thai Fight. If it is deemed a draw, we'll go to one more round. Has Sayok done enough to win the round? We believe, we unofficially believe he will in the first round. Has he done enough to win the third and take it to a fourth? We're about to find out, folks. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see what the judges say, but many may think that Sayok has done enough in that third round to redeem himself. But my goodness, how in the world do you score a fight like this? Lazy very sure of himself, and also Sayok very sure of himself. But in the end, it's down to the judges. How have they scored this one? For me, it's clear cut. 10 9 Sayok. 10 8 Caucasian. 10 9 Sayok. We go to a 4. But whether the tie fight judges agree with me or not, we'll see. I have to agree with you. But again, we're not judges. We're just here to call a fight. So let's call the replay for that third round. Beautiful left hand there from Sayok. He's done very good on the inside. You know what? Not an easy round to score. Oh, absolutely not. Because we thought Caucasian was doing well, but Sayok. He found the target on a lot of occasions in that round. What an amazing chin there from the German Haitian fighter as well, taking so many shots and dishing out many shots as well. Just like that. Oh, it's going to be very exciting to see Sayo, how the judges score this one. Sayo My goodness. Thinks, Sayo thinks he's done enough to turn the fight around. And then Lizzie thinks he's done enough to win. Maybe they're both wrong. See what the judges have to say about this fight here. Nai fai dam sing ma se. Oi. Ah. Ma. 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 Oh, so
จะเป็นผู้ชนะนะทั้งสองคนเดินมากอดกันแล้วมีรอยยิ้มให้กันนี่ผมว่าสุดยอดนี่คือน้ำใจนักกีฬา good job good job really good จอมเวทแห่งเสียมเรียบลีริชลีริชจอมเวทแห่งเสียมเรียบประเทศกัมพูชาลีลิทรีนะฮะ from Cambodia นะครับมาตรงนี้ผมเรียกจอมเวทมาปราบซาตาเลยนี่สโลแกนโคตรน่ากลัวเลยครับผมโอ้แกสโลแกนยังน่ากลัวขนาดนี้แต่ผู้ที่ขึ้นมาประทัดด้วยนะเขาบอกว่าเขาไม่กลัวครับมาเขาคือหนึ่งในโคตรมวยแห่งยุคเขาบอกว่าชอบหยุดคู่ต่อสู้ด้วยกันเตะเจาะยางนี่แหละดูแค่เอ่ยชื่อเขาเสียงก็กินเหมือนมีรนลงของแล้วไหนขอเสียงเป็นเทพบุตรซาตาหน่อยเลยสุดสากลจอมเวทสาคนสอกลิ่นมีเทพบุตรซาตานประเทศไทยอาศุมอาศุมีวันที่สองที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่สามที่ Padia City, Thailand. He has a total of 320 fights, 275 victories, 42 losses, and three draws. Of course, Sutsukon Sokolimi, 
is the first ever Thai Fight Catch Up champion, winning that back in 2013 by beating Sayong Pupamuang in the final. And you can tell a lot of fans are excited for this one here. So it's a core, no matter where we go. A lot, a lot of women are excited about this. Oh, yes. <laughs> No, hear the screams all the way back to his hometown in Patia. <laughs> Axe kick straight away there from Sutsukon. A very interesting start there oh. from Sutsukon Sokunmi against his Cambodian opponent, Lee Ritty. Lee Ritty fighting out of the top stadiums back in Cambodia. Now gets to show his skills here in the Thai fight ring. This fight taking place at 75 kilograms. Sutsukon looking. Fresh. Oh, not that time though. We got caught with the right hand just over the ear. Trying to throw Lee Ritchie down like he likes to do with many other opponents. Lee Ritchie standing his ground though. Inside kick there from Ritchie. And then looking for that right hand again. It's been a while since we've seen an opponent um, have a reach advantage against Sutsakorn. Yeah, it's possible. So Lee Ritchie may cause some problems here for Sutsakorn. Beautiful kick there from Lee Ritchie. Ritty trying to tie, sorry, Sutsukon trying to try a Ritty there. It's a nice elbow though, thrown by Sutsukon Sokunmi. As he's still in the back foot, Lee Ritty doing a good job walking down Sutsukon. Yeah, he's looking relaxed. Right hand there from Sutsukon, but Ritty return fire. Just a nice knee to top that one off. You've got to say, Lee Ritty's been absolutely impressive so far in this fight. I'm always super involved, my goodness. Almost knocked himself down there, Lee Ritchie, trying to go for some sort of Superman punch. That was almost like an Irish whip there from Sutsukon. <laughs> <laughs> some wrestling references there from Aaron. Oh, good right hand there from Sutsukon, and then a good elbow. Ritchie walks into that one. you got to admire Lee Ritchie for staying on his feet for that one. He took some heavy shots from Sutsukon. I've always been an admirer of Sutsukon's leg kicks as well. He's got tree trunk legs. Oh, there it is again, that one-two. Ritty, an open target right now. Oh, but lately I've been a huge fan of Sutsakorn's hands. It's, it's improved so much ever since he's been with Eggapop. Oh, again. Right hand goes in then with the left. Now read Ritty in the corner, receiving again, it. Two again. right hands in a row. Three right and hands, four oh. right hands. And the referee may have no option but to count. Lee Ritty has a hard time getting up to his feet. Bambi on ice. Ritchie's just gotta, just gotta use that eight count and try and compose himself, but Sutsukon's gonna move in for the kill! Another big right hand there for Sutsukon, and a huge elbow there! Lee Ritchie on walking his legs, but clinches up, tries to buy himself some time. Another rule here at Type Fight, if you knock down three times, in one, over the course of the fight, that's it. The ref will call it. Oh, he's punch drunk right now, I don't know how he's staying on his feet! Uppercut, right hand, elbow, Sutsukon! Almost fighting for pride now, Lee Ritty. He's dazed, he's confused. There's something that's keeping Lee Ritty in this fight. I don't know what that is. Strong legs and a, and a heart. And that's another the referee. And the called it. He's done the right thing there. Lee Ritty looked out of it since the first lockdown. Enough damage was taken. Ritty was on one legs, like Kevin said. Sutsukon moved in for the kill. The referee made the right decision. Congratulations, Sutsukon saw a clean move. Gotta say, I'm just so impressed by Sutsukon's boxing. It's absolutely unbelievable how much he's improved over the time he was actually absent from Thai fight. Both him and his brother. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Drops the Sinsamut if he's listening in English. <laughs> it's almost like a competition between the two brothers. Anything you can do, I can do better. Well, Sutsukon's going up right now. Let's have a look at the highlight. The highlight being the knockdown. Oh, the knockdowns. Right hands. That was the initial one. But when he got back up, he was struggling to stay up. And the referee. There it is, that left up to the body. And then a right hand. And the referee. Ty ref, some of the best in the world. Could see that he was in no condition to continue. Sutsukon slaves. Another fighter here at Ty Fight. Stay with us, folks. Still to come, PTT, Deng Nung, and then, of course, Shad Chai will be here at Thai Fight. Sis suck it. Oh, right hands for days.
ทางการเลยแล้วกันนะครับครับผมทางกรรมการเตรียมพร้อมแล้วนะครับแล้วก็ส่งเสียงหนึ่งนายผู้ชนะหน่อยแล้วกันนะรับผู้ชนะของเราเดอะวินเนอร์อีสสุดสายพลสกิดมีปรองชัยนะคริสเซียนพอโซเดคริสเตียนพาสโตเรซูเปอร์เซียประเทศอาร์เจนตินาชกกล้องที่นี่เอาขอเสียงเขาอีกรอบหนึ่งคริสเตียนปาสโตเรโอ้โหมาน้ำน้อมน้อมน้อมแบบคนไทยด้วยสุดยอดแต่ต้องเจอคู่ต่อสู้ก่อนเดี๋ยวเขาจะแบบเดี๋ยวได้เจอหาไม่ออกแต่ต้องบอกว่านี่แหละฮะคือความมั่นใจนะที่เขาเตรียมมาเขาไม่กลัวอะไรเลยนะคนนี้กำใจเป็นสิ่งสําคัญถูกต้องและผู้ที่ขึ้นมาต่อก่อนด้วยนั้นนะครับจะขึ้นชกในพิกัดน้ําหนัก68กิโลกรัมนะครับในปี2022นี้ขึ้นชกมา4ครั้งครับเอาชนะนอกได้ทั้ง4ครั้งเลยครับผมและเขาคือหนึ่งในทําเนียบแชมป์อิสุสุครับเอานีวิสุสุดีแม็กซ์พลานุภาพไร้ขีดจํากัดครับขอเสียงต้อนรับนะครับฉลามร้ายให้มังชนปอตตะวอรุจิรวงบอรุจิระวงฉลามร้ายแห่งเมืองชนประเทศไทยเซฟเฟอร์บาวด์ออฟดีอีฟนิ่ง
And you are looking at Christian Pastore. 32 years of age from Argentina, 172 centimeters tall, with a professional record of 47 fights, 33 victories, 13 losses, and one draw. Former Muay Thai champion of Argentina in 2017. Now introducing his opponent there on your screens, PTT Valrujat Wong, nicknamed the Dangerous Shark of Chunri Province. His real name is Wan Chalum Fang Dan Klang, 24 years of age, 278 centimeters tall from Padia City, Thailand. It's a total of 160 fights, 130 victories, 29 losses, and one draw. Of course, uh, the Susu Cup tournament champion, the Susu Cup super fight champion, a Thai fight champion, a Thai fight Kat Shuk champion, my goodness. <laughs> to be continued. Yeah, indeed. I think it's fair to say. PTT, of course, possesses huge knockout power. And he's coming up against Christian Pastore, nicknamed Super Saiyan. Will he actually go Super Saiyan, though, with this fight? He's going to have to. <laughs> Absolutely. His other nickname, of course, Dragon Ball. <laughs> fair to say he's a fan of Dragon Ball. <laughs> I think... Uh, yeah, Pastore was actually a late replacement for uh, Soda, was it? Soda, so cheap. Yeah, from uh, around Tuesday, we believe, that uh, that switch was made. And enter Pastore, who has fought here on Thai Fight before when he took on Sanchai. He was doing really well until Sanchai broke his rib. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the and public the might fight. not know that, but that's exactly what happened. Oh, swinging right then there from PTT. Pastore clips the right hand of his own. PTT already cornering Christian Pastore. Christian Pastore is still trying to fight back though. Lots of venom in that right hand though coming from PTT. And what a shot there thrown by Pastore. Venom is correct, which is also the name of the gym that he trains out of. Oh, absolutely. In Padilla City, Thailand, of course. Pastore really throwing down here. Going like for like with the dangerous PTT. Good left knee there from PTT. Christian Pastore didn't seem to like that knee. Coming in from PTC, perhaps PTC might want to throw some more. He's really swinging with that overhand right, Kevin. Yeah. Oh, good uppercut there from PTT. And we've seen him swing like before and get caught in the process. Oh! But not going to happen this time. Pastore is down. And oh. out. And it's all over. Oh, my goodness. Another. Eyes glazed into the back of the head there from Pastore. I have to see what shot that actually did that. It happened so fast. And it's another first round stoppage victory for PTT for Rujarat Wong. Such an amazing fighter at such a young age, 24 years of age. He really has, he really does have dynamite in those hands. The TNT of PTT strikes again and explodes. Pastore, valiant effort. But who can stop PTT when he's in this form? Natural power, a training at Venom where lots of fighters have gone to and turned themselves into champions. Including Gitti as well. Yeah, Gitti is Gitti. one of his teammates and of course they also grew up in the same gym previously. Here we go. Oh, looks like it was the uppercut. Nope. Overhand right behind the ear. Yeah, it was a the overhand right I think it was. A glazing right hand. Let's see that one more time. This one. I think it must have just been a combination of all the uh, shots that he was taking combined together. Let's see if we can see more clearly from this angle here. A beautiful right uppercut there from PTT. I believe that was an earlier shot. That right hand connected, flush. Nothing there. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's where it came from, right. the right hand to the head. I think his head actually hit his shoulder. If we can see that again. There, boom. That's when you know it's all over. If that happens, it's lights out. Let's take a look at that shot one oh, more time. There's no goodness. stopping that. That is nasty. Beautiful victory there for PTT Bobo Who can stop him? <laughs> The winner is Patata Waruti Rawong from Thailand! Yes, yes, yes!
เขายังคงสร้างสถิติต่อไปในการน็อกนะฮะนี่มีท่าด้วยมีท่าด้วยซุปเปอร์ไซยาเจอุตแมนได้ไหมหน่อยผมชอบนักมวยไทยจริงคือเขามีสีสันนะเขาจะมีความสนุกในตัวเองแล้วก็ฝีไม้ลายมือไม่ธรรมดาครับแน่นอนนะยังไม่หมดแค่นี้นะฮะยังรอใครรอเต็งหนึ่งอยู่ใครรอนะพี่สันชัยอีกสักครู่กับไทยไปสีสเกลพยักมอตมะชุนมิลล์ยอดมวยจากเมียนมาครับชุนมินรัตมาแล้วนะพร้อมกับพ่นไฟพลังไฟมาแหมแค่เปิดตัวก็ยิ่งใหญ่อลังการดูน่ากลัวแล้วนะครับและผู้ที่จะขึ้นมาท้าดวลด้วยนั้นนะครับจะขึ้นชกในพิกัดน้ำหนัก77กิโลกรัมนี่ครับต่อให้2โลใช่เจ้าของพลังหมัดที่ไร้ขีดจำกัดนะครับหนึ่งในทำเนียบแชมป์อิสุสุครับโอนิวอิสุสุดีแม็กซ์พลานุภาพไร้ขีดจำกัดอขอเสียงปรบมือดังๆต้อนรับมังกรปากน้ำโพเต็งหนึ่งสิทธิเจสายรองเต็งหนึ่งสิทธิเจสายรุงมังกรปากน้ำโพประเทศไทยกันต่อไป the eighth bout of the evening in the white corner Tun Min Lat 24 years of age from Myanmar 186 centimeters tall weighed in at 79 kilograms with a professional record of 38 fights 15 victories three losses and 20 draws why does he have 20 draws because he is traditionally a left way fighter and in the rules of left way If you do not win the fight by a knockout, it is declared a draw. So the most important stat to look at there is 38 fights with only three losses. He is a strong and talented fighter. Now introducing his opponent fighting out of the black corner. He goes by the name of Deng Deng Sitje Sai Rung. Real name, Eka Pan. Sombun Sap, 29 years of age, 180 centimeters tall from Nakhon Sawan province to the central part of Thailand. He has a total of 108 fights, 90 victories, 14 losses and four 
draws. It's going to be an interesting fight here, of course. Tanmin Lat coming from a very famous Lethway or traditional Myanmar boxing family. His older brother being Tan Tan Min. Tan Tan Min, of course, who was uh, the Lethway Golden Belt champion at one point of his life. Of course, it's such a prestigious honor to have. So you can see there, Deng Nun, 77 kilograms. Tan Min Lat has been given a two kilogram weight advantage, 79 kilograms. Not sure if you're able to see the camera, but um, Tan Min Lat was uh, performing the Leko Muan, of course. It's like the Y crew of Myanmar, so, so, so to speak. I think that's the best way I could uh, describe it. So definitely bringing Myanmar traditional boxing here to the Thai fight ring. Of course, in left way. It's rocked hands, taped hands, but you can also use headbutts. Of course, you cannot do that in Muay Thai. And you can win my points here in Thai fight and in Muay Thai, but not in Myanmar. Yeah, we saw him backstage and uh, he's a big, big boy. Oh, absolutely. And like we said, um, he's got a two kilo weight advantage against Deng Nung to Jai Rung. And you can see it, can't you? He's, he's big. Oh, absolutely. He's actually been training um, with one of the fighters we saw early on in the card. He's been training with uh, Falikit, who of course has also been fighting left weight. An issue here with the uh, Dengman's Cup, it seems. Perhaps we need to get that sorted right now. The referee's just telling him to go outside and fix it, but he says he can carry on. Beautiful low kick there from Technic to Jason Rook. Another low kick from the man from the console one. Good left hand there from Dengman. And then to the body. A huge body shot there from Technic. Oh! And a huge head kick there My from Dengman to Jason Rook. And it doesn't look like Tunman Lat has got to get up. Seems comfortable there on the floor. No, he gets right back up. He says he wants to continue, and why not? These left way fighters, man, they are tough. Not sure what Dengren was trying that time. No. Probably trying to go for the 100,000. There's but a left hand kick again and down. Almost hits the referee as well. For a second and final time, that it's all over. And of course, in left way, you get two minutes to try and get yourself back to your feet. Ah. Not, not in more time. time. Not in more time. That is the end of the fight. Congratulations to Teng Ning, Sai Rung. And a good effort there from Tunmin Lat. I think Teng Ning was spurred on from the fact that he had a box malfunction and he just wanted to get this fight over with. Oh, absolutely. But we don't see it often from Teng Ning finishing the fight with a head kick. He is ranked as one of, if not the best, in his weight division, Teng Ning, and he's just proving it time and time again. And now he's at Vertex, training, getting into shape for every fight he's looking better than ever let's take a look of Deng Nung's handiwork it's that left high kick smash even though Tun Min Lat had his hand up to try and block that it wasn't enough and down he went then Deng Nung found that opening and once again found the spot and Tun Min Lat was unable to answer the count the referee decided to take the gum shield out Fair to say, uh, and that's Lat, not, not so lucky, but the referee extremely lucky there not to catch a kick from Teng Nung. Teng Nung, powerful. I mean, Tumlin Lat is back on his feet here, but he still, he still looks a bit dazed, Kevin. And it's that high kick there from Teng Nung that finished the fight. I can't remember the last time we saw him finish a fight with a high kick. Well, what do we say? Are we going to ask Big Brother to come in and Challenge Teng Nung. Ooh, I could bet that Tan Tan Min is definitely looking at this fight. He might not want it after watching that. <laughs> <laughs> or he might want it even more. 38 fights. He's only lost three times in left way, which is unbelievable. What that technique from Teng Nung. Absolutely Incredible. amazing. Known for his hands. 100% known for the power that he possesses in those hands. Well, he's known for power in every single thing he throws. He proves it again. And coming up next, Sanchai. Stay with us. The winner is... Deng Nung Sai Rung from Thailand! Good morning. This is
ุดยอดนะครับที่น่าเกรงขามของราชาน็อกเอาของเราและดูสิชอบมากๆที่มังกรปัตตาโพเดินไปส่งคู่ต่อสู้ถึงลิมเวทีเลยทีเดียวใช่ครับสุดยอดครับสุดยอดสุดยอดเหลือพูดมวยของเรานะใครที่ติดตามนะครับแสนชัยอัลลันยาวุเดอัลลันยาวุดีคุณสึกแดนฟ้าขาว <Sanly> มาแล้วครับคู่ท้าชิงล่าสุดนะฮะของโค้ดมวยแห่งสุยามครับผมนี่นี่นี่น่ากลัวมากเหมาะสมที่จะมาออกมาเป็นคู่สุดท้ายจริงๆครับดูนะฮะเจ้าของเข็มขัดต่างๆนานาที่บอกไปขุนศึกแดนฟ้าขาวมาหลายรางวัลเหลือเกินอ้าไม่ว่าจะกี่รางวัลนะฮะสำหรับผู้ที่จะขึ้นมาประทะด้วยนั้นนะครับเขาคือโคตรระมวยที่สุดบังแห่งยุคกันเลยทีเดียวนะครับขอเสียงนะครับมีเสียงกรี๊ดเท่าไหร่เสียงปรบมือขนาดไหนเอาให้ดังกึกก้องให้กับโคตรมวยแห่งสยามแสนชัยพีเคแสนชัยมวยชัยเย้ใช่มาแล้วโอ้โหลนาพีเคแสนชัยมวยไทยยิ้มพีเคแสนชัยมวยไทยยิ้มพีเคแสนชัยมวยไทยยิ้มแสนชัยพีเคแสนชัยมวยไทยยิ้มโคตรมวยแห่งสยามประเทศไทยจากดินแดนของถิ่นอีสานฝากไว้เป็นตำนานขอฝากไว้เป็นตำนานให้เขารู้กันนี่คือมวยไทยดังพบไปแดนไกลไม่สิน้นใครได้ยินเขาต้องสยบเมื่อได้พบพบกับมวยไทยโอ้ยละว่าคนงามจังว่าละโอ้ยคนงามอายสิตามใจเจ้าไปนำสิได้บอสิได้บอสิไปถามจอจอที่ว่าจังไดอายมีใจหักมันความฝันอายซ้ำนี้แสนใช่นี้แต่ใจปลดระไปแน่เด้อดังเด้อเด้อเด้อแน่เด้อดังเด้อเฮ้ยละว่าคนงาIt's smoky in here. If only we had masks. <laughs> okay. Now time for your main event of the evening. In the white corner from Argentina, Mr. Alan Chowney 
25 years of age, 173 centimetres tall, with a professional record of 32 fights, 23 victories, with eight losses and one draw. An Argentinian Muay Thai champion, as well as an ISKA champion. Now it's time to introduce his opponent in the black corner representing Mahasarokan province in northeastern part of Thailand, Sanchai, PK Sanchai Muay Thai Gym. His real name is Superchai Sanpong, 41 years of age, 263 centimeters tall. He's had a total of 376 fights, 325 victories, 49 losses and two draws. Of course, he's a two-time Sports Writers Association of Thailand Fighter of the Year Award winner. And he's also a three division Lupini champion. He's also the Thai fight champion 2019, 18, 17, and the Kachuk champion 2016. He's done it all, hasn't he, Sanchai? He has. And not only that, remember, he's now, what, how old? 41 years of 41 age? 41 years of age, exactly. He fought this month already. Yes, he has. <laughs> <laughs> At the beginning Incredible. of this month. Two fights in one month. Sanchai can do it all. And fought against uh, Ali Dor Doratsian. And won by knockout. That's right, in the second round with a beautiful knee. Yeah, I'll be interested to see if uh, Chowney has spotted that, if he's been working on some skills some, to try and count what, count, uh, what Sanchai can produce. And that knee might cause him some worry because he has been throwing it a lot recently. Absolutely, a lot of cheers for Sanchai here. Of course, he is also from the Isan region, exactly where we are right now, Sisakian province. Interesting start there from Sanchai. He does the switch up. Very famous for that, of course. We've already seen an Argentinian compete in the tie fight ring here tonight against PTT with not much success. Now down to Chowney to try and restore some national pride. You've got to love the composure that, that Ch Chowney is showing so far, but. Oh, question mark kick. As we know, it doesn't really last long because Sanchai seems to figure out his opponents quite fast. Sanchai now on the back foot. Shoni with the reach advantage. Yeah, Chowney 173 centimeters tall, so 10 centimeter height advantage apparently. Looks a little bit more, doesn't it, when they go come face to face? Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but he's holding his own so far. Trying to go for a high kick there, Sanchai, but a good evasion by Alan Shoney. Block there from Sanchai as Chowney tries to go for the legs. Sanchai looking for that sweep. Swing and a miss that time. Good evasion there from the Argentinian fighter. Goes into the clinch. Maybe not where you want to be against, oh. against Sanchai because that's exactly what will happen. Beautiful sweep there from the legend. Head almost drilled into the canvas that time. Oh, beautiful left kick to the body. Finally Outside hitting its kick. mark. Yeah, just under the arm. Another beautiful kick there from Sanchai. Maybe just blocked there from Allen. Alan Chowney though, still looking very composed, but receives a kick once again from Sanchai. I don't know what it is, but a lot of fighters, when they get into the ring with Sanchai, they seem to be drawn into Sanchai's game. I think that's exactly what's going on with Alan right now. Because if you're going to try to beat him with technical superiority, you're never going to do that, ever. Beautiful kick from the Argentinian, nonetheless. Old man right from Sanchai. Now trying to back up Chowney. And a round one. Here we go, coming into our second round of our final bout of the evening. Of course, Sanchai in the black corner. And Alan Chowney from Argentina. Tina, excuse me, Argentina in the white corner. And Aaron, after seeing that display, if you're the corner man of Alan, what would you tell him to do? You know what, I would, I would honestly say it would be a little bit more aggressive, take a little bit more risk. 
He was doing okay in the first round. He was just trying to circle away from Sanchai and just find his moments. So I think it's fair to say, don't don't play the technical game with Sanchai because you're never going to win that one. I think we might see that here in the second round now. But yeah, change gears now. I think he showed what you can do in the first round. Now it's just up the tempo a little bit more. Good left hand there from Sanchai. Good body shot. Oh, good left hand there from Sanchai. And Sanchai has just turned it on. Some beautiful combinations put together from Sanchai. PK, Sanchai, Moise, Jim. Low kick there. Looking for that left hand. Chowney just able to move out the way. Yeah, the Argent Argentines on the ropes now. No, we didn't. We mentioned, didn't we, at the uh, before the start of the fight that Sanchai's knees are starting to, you know, play a big role in the way he fights. He hasn't thrown one yet. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> but perhaps he will. Inside kick there from Sanchai. Sanchai is definitely one of the most unpredictable fighters in the game today and throughout history, really. And another beautiful kick connecting there for the legend. I'm quite impressed the way Chowney is able to move backwards on his feet. Yeah, looking very slim with his footwork. But right now he starts to, he needs to start throwing some combinations as well. Oh, he moved forward and caught a left hand there from Sanchai. Or has to throw some shots because he's on the ropes once again, somewhere where he doesn't want to be. Sanchai's finding a hole for that left hand to the body. There it is again on Chowney. And he moves up top. Sanchai once again beat the fighter as moving forward. I think Chowney was asking the referee to remove his Prajit there, but the referee wasn't having any of it. No, definitely not. You're still in the middle of the fight. That's the first thing you've got to focus on is your opponent. Body shot there from Sanchai. Looking for the oh, Valero gets caught with the right hand and a right kick. Good technical stuff there from Chowney. It's a beautiful combination there put by the Argentinian fighter. He needs to do more of that though. Push kick from Sanchai. Then another body shot. This time with that kick. Oh, solid slick left hand there from the goal. Now Choney moving forward now. He gets kicked once again, Alan Choney. Cartwheel kick! Hey. It's not a Sanchai fight without seeing that and it uh, looks like Alan is almost starstruck after Sanchai threw that. Possibly thinking to yourself every single day, will I ever receive a <laughs> cartwheel kick from Sanchai? And there we go, end of the second round of our final battle of the evening. First, the second round is in the books and one more round left to go. Sanchai PK, Sanchai Moisai Jim in the black corner and Alan Chowney from Argentina in the white corner. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from that second round. The best shot that Alan as he threw in that round was that right hook to Sanchai. But throughout the rest of the fight, let's take a look at that hard wheel kick there from Sanchai. Sanchai didn't seem to be having any problems at all with his opponent. Well, Chowney happy to play it safe and be defensive. I've actually been quite impressed. Same. A lot of opponents who take on Sanchai seem to have a lot of problems. Well, uh, there's some of them as well. I think they decide that they just want to go the distance. Yeah. You know, that's a win in itself. I think that's what Chowney's playing today. He's starting to move forward though. Well, yeah. Oh! Right hook there from Chowney. Low kick. And a good block there from the Argentine fighter as well. Moving back and forth. Very oh, well done there from the Argentine. But ultimately receives a kick once again from Sanchai PK, Sanchai Moy, Sanchai Jim, and what a left hand as well. Chowney whipping that right high kick up with ease. Right hook there from Sanchai. 41 years of age, but the speed is still there. Solid right hand. Going to go for a low kick there, or perhaps a sweep by Sanchai. Beautiful body kick there by Sanchai once again. And again. And trying to go for a sweep and almost successful if it wasn't for the ropes. You know what Ty Comites would say, if there wasn't any ropes there, he'd be out of the ring. Good defense there from Sanchai. A very interesting maneuver there from the Argentine fighter. Sanchai still moving forward, trying to take it to Chowney. He has found a hole for that inside left kick. Quite a lot has Sanchai. Absolutely, another beautiful kick there from Sanchai once again, and he's connected so many of those kicks. 
sees Sanchai happy just to go Chowney in that time and caught him with the left hand. Now he's moving forward. Swing in, left hand, almost connects. I think it did connect there, in fact. Almost connects, flush. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Good body shot again from Sanchai. Hasn't slowed down from the first to the third and there's round. the first knee, in fact. Yep. Oh, and a swing in left. Oh, Sanchai just controlling the match now. Oh, there's that left again. Right to the mouth of Chowney. This has become the Sanchai show here in the third round of our main event of the evening. Sanchai fighting the way he wants to. Again, body shot. Two body shots there from Sanchai. Perhaps another one coming up pretty soon. A good block there from Chowney. There it is. Oh, and the left hand snaps Chowney's head back. Beautiful switch kick there from the legend. End of the third and final round. Beautiful display of Muay Thai actually from both fighters. I really enjoyed that one. We will go to the judges of course. But you have to say, Sanchai with the Muay Thai clinic to finish the proceedings here. An amazing Thai fight, Sisaket. Gotta say though, the display that Alan put in there was very impressive. It's been a while since we've seen a fighter take Sanchai to the distance and didn't look like he was about to be knocked out, so to speak. No, he did it. He seemed to be very calm and collected. Even when Sanchai was going through the motions and delivering solid kicks and punches. Just think about a good matchup. I mean, Allen versus uh, Max Brannis. <laughs> I was thinking the exact same thing. Exactly. I really was. Good left knee from Sanchai there. He pretty much was in control the whole fight. And I think actually dominated in the third round as well. So do this left hand there. Yeah, it did connect, but not connect flush, as you said. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, right to the eye for good measure. Still performing at 41, fighting twice a month. The kids that finish the fight. You say it looks like Messi there, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, Alan enjoyed that one as well. ใช่ครับรอสักครู่นะครับโอ้โหชาวสีสะเก็ดในไหนมาให้การต้อนรับอย่างดีล้นหลามอยู่แล้วนะฮะเดี๋ยวไม่ถ่ายรูปกันทั